All right, so here's a little bit of a tour of the Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station, uh, kind of operated and managed by the Riverside Astronomical Society. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, place. Uh, let's maybe start this way. Um, behind me is Goat Mountain. Uh, why they call it Goat Mountain, uh, not really sure. Uh, here is the pad I operated on last night. Um, I will uh, put some images in. Uh, you'll notice that some of the pads here have piers. So this row of pads is what they call the east side. And uh, right now uh, we're facing north. Um, west is to my left, um, east is to my right, and uh, south is behind me. So it makes it very easy to set up uh, your rig and uh, point towards uh, Polaris. So, okay, let's, uh, let's kind of do a little walk over here. Here's uh, the van. Uh, behind me is... Uh, is uh, the setup of uh, a person named Ron who I met last night. He uh, has a 22 inch Dobson and he let me uh, visualize, you know, visually view through his Dobson, uh, Saturn with its rings and Jupiter with its moons. We looked at a, a, a star uh, cluster. Um, we saw the Crab Nebula. So, you know, sometimes I think uh, having started with uh, astrophotography uh, that I'm cheating a little bit. I mean, he knows the sky, he knows all the constellations, he knows the magnitudes in the, of, the, of the stars in the uh, constellations. Uh, so, uh, interesting uh, person. And I think this is one of the things I was looking forward to by joining a club, is to be around other people that are doing similar uh, activities so I can learn from them. And already on my first trip, um, I'm learning and we, uh, we stayed up to about four o'clock uh, looking for the uh, meteor shower. I, I saw about 25. I was a little bit heads down. I had an issue with my autofocuser. I think I re have resolved it by changing a setting in NIDA from absolute to overshoot. So we'll see tonight uh, when I get set up um, if that fixes my problem. But uh, let's go on with the tour. Okay, what we're walking towards now are, is a row of observatories. And um, as you see, that, that row of observatories continues all the way down that way. But um, the, what I found interesting is um, some of these observatories um, they don't come out, you know, they just access them remotely. Uh, the roof slides off and uh, every, all their work is done remotely. Uh, so there's several of these observatories uh, that are remotely managed, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. And then um, you'll see these domes here. So this east row where I'm uh, temporarily using one of the pads, um, this is designed to be a dome road, uh, row. So eventually this whole row will be filled with uh, domes. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. And then we have some, uh, some pads. All the pads have power. So uh, generally uh, that one has uh, one power outlet and then generally there's a power outlet where two pads share. So that's, uh, that's kind of how it's set up. And these are very level, which made it really easy for setting up my uh, uh, HEQ5 Pro last night. So again, more observatories. Inside the fenced area are some houses based upon your status as a club member. And if you are leasing a pad 
or maybe the lease is not the correct terminology, but pads can be assigned to people. There's a fee and then there's an annual maintenance fee, but uh, with that also comes uh, with a card uh, access. And here we have another row of observatories. And now we're over on the west side with uh, even more uh, pads. So, um, you know, I think that if you want the best information and you have any inter interest in, in the Riverside Astronomical uh, Society, the club, to access their website and uh, communicate with them directly. I don't want to give any misinformation. I have started the process of finding out how I can get a pad assigned, what the costs are. So I may do that. Um, but there's many pads here that are open that uh, people don't use. But if someone has a pad assigned to them and you start to set up on it and then they arrive, um, uh, then you basically need to move. So, uh, but uh, there's a lot of information on how that all works and I would uh, suggest you look directly at their uh, website for information as well as information on um, this site here, GMARS or Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station. So really uh, a cool site. I'm glad uh, I came down here. And uh, you'll also notice, I don't know if you notice in the background, there's a lot of Joshua trees here. We're not uh, that far from Joshua National Park. We're, I guess, essentially in the town of Landers, California, at about 3,000 feet uh, elevation or 895 meters, I think. Um, but uh, pretty cool. I'm, uh, I'm really enjoying it. And... Um, I'm looking forward to coming down here more times and uh, I'm uh, what I'm finding out is when I come here it's of course my first trip and uh, I'm making sure everything uh, is here that I needed and um, understanding how much power my Jackery 1000 has a lot of power available I use very little in a night so I'm just learning how to uh, operate in this environment and making sure I have everything but the other thing I notice is, you know, my whole day is focused now because I uh, went to bed at four in the morning, got up at eight, made some breakfast, had coffee, and then I dug into figuring out what my problem is with my backlash. So I find if I'm at home, there's a lot of distractions, but just being able to come out here, uh, I think is gonna let me, give me a lot of focus time. And I'm really uh, excited having met my pad neighbor, Ron. He's a wealth of information, very friendly. So, you know, that's part of what I'm looking for in a club. Uh, if you belong to a club in your area, why don't you uh, maybe call it out and let other people know that the club exists and where it may be located, because uh, maybe others may like to uh, get involved with a club. Uh, definitely as a beginner, which I am, I felt that being part of a club was, uh, was very important and would help get me up the learning curve a little bit more quickly. All right, so uh, that's it. Um, why that's called Goat Mountain, uh, really not sure, but maybe it's something I'll look into. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, brief just walk around tour of GMARS, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station. And uh, if you're in the area, you ought to check out the Riverside Astronomical Society and come out and uh, visit the facility. Uh, I don't know that you necessarily have to be a member to be on this property here, so you might want to check uh, with them before you come. Uh, but they've been very helpful all along the way, very responsive to information that I've requested. Uh, there is internet access here. Right now it's mostly for the west side, which is uh, behind me here. Uh, but uh, very good um, reception with both uh, my Verizon hotspot and my Google Pixel 5 service. So this is Goat Mountain. And uh, hopefully tonight I get my autofocus issue uh, behind me and I can move forward and start to collect some, uh, some images. All right, until next time, if you like this kind of content, 
please give it a thumbs up. As always, we welcome new subscribers. Until next time.